In this video, we study 112 years of stock market history to answer two questions. How long do bear markets typically last? And how far do stocks typically fall? There are numerous ways to identify bull and bear markets. One of them is Dow Theory. In the next few slides, we're going to use some information from Robert Colby's website, www.robertcolby.com. Dow Theory uses the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Transportation Average to gauge both the health of the economy and the markets. You can do a Google search on Dow Theory and learn more about it. Dow Theory has been around a long time. There have been 66 Dow Theory signals in the last 112 years. 79% of those signals were profitable, which means Dow Theory sell signals which are bearish, should be respected. Using data over the last 112 years, the median bear market as identified by Dow Theory lasts 16 months and sees stocks drop by 34%. The most recent Dow Theory sell signal occurred on August 2nd of this year with the S&P 500 trading at 12.54. If the current signal produced a typical Dow Theory bear market, stocks would not bottom until December of 2013 and the S&P 500 would hit somewhere in the neighborhood of 827. Relative to the dot-com bust, a Dow Theory sell signal was given on September 23, 1999 with the S&P trading at 1280. Stocks did not bottom until October of 2002 with the S&P 500 hitting a low of 768. If we saw a similar bear market based upon the Dow Theory sell signal that we got on August 2nd of this year, the current bear market would last until August of 2014 and the S&P 500 would bottom at 589. Relative to the 2007 to 2009 financial crisis, Dow Theory produced a sell signal on November 21st, 2007, with the S&P 500 trading at 1416, stocks did not bottom until the S&P 500 hit 666 intraday on March 6th, 2009. If we saw a similar bear market relative to August 2nd, when we got the current Dow Theory sell signal, stocks would not bottom until mid-November of 2012, and the S&P 500 would drop to 752. This is a summary of the historical examples that we just went over. And what it tells us is if the Dow Theory sell signal that we got in August of this year produces a bear market that's similar to the median Dow Theory bear market or the two historical examples that we went over, stocks may not bottom until November of 2012 and possibly might not find a bottom until August of 2014. The numbers to the right show where the S&P 500 could potentially bottom based upon the historical examples in the median Dow Theory bear market. Common refrains from investors at the early stages of a bear market, which is where we are in late November of 2011, are, I'm just going to wait it out. I'm a buy and hold investor. I'd prefer just to sit in cash. Why aren't we just buying the dips? The time periods and potential levels for the S&P 500 here show you that waiting it out as a buy and hold investor could be very, very expensive and it could take a lot longer than we can wrap our arms around right now for stocks to bottom. Sitting in cash, do you really want to have your assets sitting idle and not working for you? potentially until August of 2014, and buying the dips. Buying the dips in when you've got a Dow Theory sell signal or you've got other ways of identifying that you're in a bear market, you're buying dips when the odds are against you and the odds continue to favor lower lows in asset prices until conditions change and or improve. So a good general rule of thumb is in bear markets, you're either in cash, you're short, you own conservative bonds, or you own currencies. And you'll notice owning stocks is not on the list. Why? Because the odds favor 
lower lows in stock prices. So over the full course of a bear market, owning stocks is a low probability event in terms of being profitable. In bull markets, the options are pretty simple. You're either in cash, you own stocks, which is being long, you can own bonds, and you can own a wide variety of currencies and commodities. You'll notice on this list, during a bull market, shorting is not an option. Why? Because the odds favor higher highs in stock prices, and thus shorting is a low probability event in terms of being profitable. During the early to middle stages of a bear market, dividend and blue chip stocks do tend to hold up better and thus investors migrate towards them. Unfortunately, in the latter half of a bear market, blue chips and dividend stocks are not immune to the declines in stock prices. You can pause this here and you can look at how some of these assets did in the 2007 to 2009 bear market. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.